So, when you added nickels to your finite state machine, I hope that this ended up increasing the number of states that you could uh, be in for your machine. So you could now have possible deposits in your vending machine of 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30 cents total. I hope your finite state machine looks something like my finite state machine. Um, with transitions noted, mostly nothing's going to happen. I hope I, I did something that where we might differ. Notice at uh, the state where 25 cents is deposited, um, if someone accidentally put a dime in, uh, that would be in excess of the needed amount of money, and the machine will be kind and return a nickel to them while transitioning them into the state which says they're ready to purchase their soda. Um, hopefully, your machine looks something like mine. Let's take it one step further. What happens now if we try to add a change return button to the machine? This is going to change the possible inputs in your finite state machine. So this really should be in purple. Um, my problem is that uh, I used R to represent root beer as an input, so I can't use R to represent return as an input. I'm going to represent it using RE. So including a return button at any state in the machine, if the input is hitting the return button, the sum of money in the machine on deposit should be returned to the user and the state should revert back to the initial state S0. So to see that, uh, let's see, it should look something like this. So all the information about our finite state machine, uh, the starting state S, or the set of states S, the input states I, the output states O, the transition function F, the output function G, and the starting state are contained in this diagram. Uh, we've very explicitly written out uh, what our sets are, but we haven't really talked about our functions, our transition function and our output function. So the next step is I want to take this diagram and I want to use it to look specifically at what our functions are. The transition function takes a pair, a state, and an input and returns the state that it transitions to. The output function takes the same pair, the state and the input pair, and tells us what the output is going to be explicitly. So for a transition function, you're going to need to have all your states listed and all your possible inputs. Here again, R is root beer, RE is return. And let me pull the image back. So there's the image again. Now in this case, uh, if you start in state zero um, and you insert a nickel, then that state should transition to state S5. But if you insert a dime, it should transition to state S10. So in your table, when you do this, adding a nickel moves you from S0 to S5, and adding a dime adds you, moves you from S0 to S10. Uh, we can do it for any state, so depending on what sum you start with, uh, if you start with a sum of 10 and you add a nickel, you move to 15. If you start with a sum of 15 and you add a dime, you move to 25, and so on. Now you'll notice that if you add uh, a nickel to uh, the state of 30, it's not going to change what state you're in. You're still in the, the state with a total sum of 30, but ah, the machine should return a nickel to you. So the, oh, I should probably add that to my diagram, uh, which I didn't have. So let me add that to my diagram. Uh, that if I'm in state 30 and I deposit a nickel, it will be returned to me and I stay in state 30. Okay, so that's the first piece. 
Uh, after that, uh, not much is going to change. If you push um, the buttons before you have the proper amount of change in the machine, your state simply isn't going to change. It's just going to stay where it is. If you push the return button, it, you are going to return to the starting state. And if you push uh, a soda button with the proper amount of money in the machine, it should return you back to the starting state again. Okay, so that is our transition function completely written out. What is our output function? Well, the output function has exactly the same state input pairs, but now we want to look at what the outputs are. When you hit the return button at any state, the total sum of money in the machine is going to be returned to the user. So that's the output there. When you have the total of 30 cents in the machine and you hit anything else, uh, you will receive your soda or nothing will happen if you have if you don't have enough money in the machine in the first place. Oh, no, that's not enough money. You have enough money. This is the return of the excess money. For any other state, uh, nothing should happen. And now I've just realized there is one state where something else should happen, so let me correct that. Uh, the one other place where something should happen is if you insert a dime at uh, a total of 25, you should uh, return a nickel because you will be in excess of the target of 30 cents by 5 cents. So that is our output function for this particular problem. The next thing I'd like to do is give you a problem to work on, but working in reverse. Oops. So for you, what I'd like you to do is start with a table that has the transition function here, f, and the output function, g, and ask you to work backwards and create this, the state diagram for it. So, Pause here.